John, first of all, what was he like? So you had a five-hour conversation, and it was quite in-depth. It was a five-hour conversation where he sketched out, really, his plan for the kingdom. Um, he has this obsession about moving the Saudi economy away from oil and basing it around something new. And this, this two trillion fund into which Aramco will go is an amazing thing. If you think about it, it's enough to buy Google, Microsoft, um, the, 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 the Alphabet, the whole lot of them, all the, but Warren Buffett, um, all those things could go into one thing and they'd still have change to spare. And in, into that fund is going to go Aramco, they've already got SABIC inside it, their industrial arm, they're going to add land, property, all these other things. And it's roughly twice as big as any other, or more than twice as big than any other sovereign wealth fund. Yeah, his obsession right, to move it away from oil is understandable given the volatility we saw in the oil price and the fact that we have concerns that Saudi haven't done the structural reforms needed. Yes, and that he's pushing on very hard as well. I mean, he's already cut all the subsidies um, and they're now moving on to other things. It's, it's a rather dramatic plan in terms of the kind of the economic transformation of a country. Uh, John, all of us were weaned on Daniel Yergin, The Prize, or Robert Lacey's books, The Kingdom, everybody read cover to cover as their first window into the royalty. We all understand this is a generational change. Did you get that tone in your interview? And if it is a generational change, where are they heading? Well, I think it is. there is something of a generational change. His father is king, and you have Mohammed bin Nayef, who is the, um, uh, the crown prince, and he's deputy crown prince. But there is an element of a group of mostly young um, reformers around him who want to push very much step on the accelerator in terms of change there. And, it, you know, there will be some people, perhaps some people in the royal family, but certainly um, people from the religious side, who will be suspicious and worried about this, but I think there is an, that there is an element whereby Saudi Arabia has to change. Um, they were stuck in a situation where they were running out of right. money. I'm now sure they really needed it. I'm sure you were briefed, uh, John, by Riyadh Hamad and John Freyer and our teams on the oil dynamics of the Middle East. What is the level of desperation in Saudi Arabia about the funding of those domestic responsibilities and having enough in the bank as they've had for generations? What's the level of sweat in Riyadh? Well, you look and see that you know, most of their revenues have come from oil, and the idea of setting this up as an investment fund is that, that that will change even technically because Aramco will go into it it will no longer be coming directly from oil they'll become a bit like very similar to you Tom a, an, a, an investor sitting there living on several trillion dollars and not um, and not moving um, it's a, it's a it's going to change even the way they think about it I think and that I think is important and they're also going to try and build up over the next few years a whole variety of different in, of, of different investments and even if you look at Saudi Aramco, the aim there is very much to go from just being a producer of the oil, it's by far the biggest producer of oil in the world, to becoming the world's biggest refiner. They've already got that very clearly in their sights. They refine about 5 billion, five billion barrels a day at the moment. They want to push that up to 8 million, 10 million. They want to move into petrochemicals. And in the end, their plan for Aramco is to be a huge industrial energy, energy company. So it goes across the whole parameters. I mean, this is a fairly dramatic change in the industrial makeup of a, both the country and, and, the, and the oil market. 